So when we are part writing, we have different motions between parts. So we're going to talk about five different motions that we have when we are talking about in between two different chords and how they move. So this is a static chord uh, change. So notice how neither part changes. That's what static means. So a static chord change means no change. Oblique chord changes means that only one part moves. So if you can see in this example, we have a G and a B, and then we, in the next chord we have a G and a C. So it means that one part stays constant. Contrary motion means that each part moves, but in opposite directions. So in this example, we can see that we start with a G and a B, and the B goes up to a C, and the G goes down to an E, which makes it contrary motion. Similar motion means that both parts move in the same direction, but not the same intervals. So you can see here that we have a similar motion chords. We have G and the B. Um, the B moves down to the G, which is a third, and then the G moves down to a C, which is a fifth. So they're both moving in the same direction, but different intervals. Finally, we have parallel motion, which means that the parts move the same interval each and in the same direction. So you can see we have a G and a B, and the B moves down to the G, which is a third, and the G moves down to an E, which is a third. So to review, we have static, which means nothing changes. We have oblique, which means one part changes. We have contrary, which means both part changes, but in opposite directions. Similar, which means that the parts both move and change in the same direction, but are at different intervals. And then we have parallel motion, where the parts both move in the same interval in the same direction. So when we think about part writing, um, we have two part part writing, three part part writing, and four part part writing. Well, lots of parts in that sentence. Um, so we have parts to look at in each texture. Um, in two part harmonies, we have two pairs to look at. In three part textures, we have three pairs to look at. And in four part textures, we have six pairs to look at. So I'm going to show you how you have to kind of look at six pairs in that four part texture so you can kind of see the relationship of each. So we have this chord here, which is just a C major chord. Um, if we look at the relationship between the bass and the tenor, that's one. The bass and the alto, that's another one. And the bass and the soprano, that's three. If we look at the relationship between the tenor and the alto, that's another tick. Uh, the tenor and the soprano, that's another one. Oh, that makes five, so this would be this way. And then if you have an alto to the soprano, which is our last interval that we would have to look at, it's six. So that's how six adds up to that one.